if you have um, your cell device, you can go to the website and pull up a copy of the corporate fast uh, that we have released for everyone, uh, for the uh, synchronizing of our hearts and minds, as well as uh, for uh, the insight to know uh, how to instigate prayer. Certainly, this is not um, our contention that you don't have the latitude to pray on other matters, but we believe that uh, these are some ways to align our hearts and our minds uh, concerning uh, seeking the will of God and the, uh, the uh, intervention of the Spirit in the affairs of man. Uh, there is a focus um, that we have established, excuse me, that we have uh, presented, and it is establish me, establish me, as I shared on watch night, uh, that uh, our one word for the year is establish. And all throughout scripture, God talks about uh, establishing and, and um, uh, establishing his will, establishing the word of the Lord. The Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away, but his word shall stand forever. He has established his word uh, with an eternal conviction. And no matter, no matter what uh, is happening, no matter what man may try to do in terms of altering that, uh, God is, um, is sure uh, that his word is not going to change. In fact, we continually contend that God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore because his truth has been established. And we want that in our lives. We want that in our lives. And so uh, if you desire a, a, a hard copy, we have those available in the uh, foyer on the uh, welcome desk. There are copies for you to grab on your way out or if you desire, I don't know if the ushers have copies with them now. If you don't have a copy and you want one, if you would just raise your hand, the ushers uh, can provide you one. There's a few hands right here. If you would, ushers, help me to get uh, these into the hands of uh, the uh, congregation at this time. Thank you so, so very much. Also, I want to point that there is a youth section. There is a youth section. Dr. Barksdale has um, uh, prepared a portion of instruction for our youth, and we are going to maintain the same, the same uh, prayer uh, points on a daily basis, but there's instruction on what the youth should be fasting, and it is on the last page, uh, and it is broken down by... Uh, uh, the, the various divisions of our youth department, our Victory uh, Kids, our uh, Pathfinders, and our Champions for Christ, all of those uh, divisions are amply uh, pointed there. And um, we want them to be engaged. We've got to show our young people uh, how to be actively participating in developing their spiritual discipline, their soul. The Bible says that we are to work out our own soul salvation with fear and trembling. And uh, he entrusts children to parents for that reason. And we need to appreciate their capacity to walk with us in spiritual things. I encourage you as parents, do not underestimate their ability to appreciate spiritual matters. Do not throw this uh, um, uh, opportunity uh, uh, to the side. Seize it in a way of um, helping to establish them, to establish them in the faith, to establish them in the cause of the kingdom of God. And you will be grateful. The, for the scripture says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when they are older, uh, he will not depart from it. Do I have an amen this morning? Amen. 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 So, so please uh, govern yourselves. I'll point out that this year our focus is going to, um, I mean, our 
instruction is that we uh, observe a 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. fasting uh, cycle to abstain from uh, food. And I know we have not done this, this particular type of fasting in uh, uh, a few years, uh, but uh, I'm pointing out, you can see that on page two after the, the, the cover at the bottom, you see it, it points to food plan instructions and specifically the time, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And I want to ask you to invest in prayer. To invest in prayer. I loved how Pastor Lisa pushed us this morning in the opening to pray. She pushed us. And even when there was a, in, a, a, uh, 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 an inclination to, to subside, she, she pushed us a little bit more. I pray that you use that as a model for how we go through these next 21 days. When you feel an unction to discontinue the presence in prayer. I want you to push to stay there a little bit longer. Stay there a little bit longer. Let the Lord establish something new in your prayer life. Let him establish something new in your pursuit of the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. And to those of you who are not here, again, you can go to our website at wvicc.org, and there you can find um, the uh, electronic version of our corporate fast, Establish Me. Would you say that with me? Would you pray that with me? Establish me, Lord. Come on, let's do it again. Establish me, Lord. Yes. Yes. All right, grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. I want you to open up with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 56. The book of Isaiah, chapter 56. We pray that uh, those who are ailing in their bodies would uh, know the virtue of God's healing power. The Bible says that the woman with the issue of blood reached out, she pressed, and touched the hem of the garment, and Christ's uh, declaration was, who touched me? Who touched me? And for it was, the Bible declares, that virtue left him. I pray, Andre, Brinson, Courtney, we pray that the virtue of the Lord would be transferred and received in your body. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray that the Lord would touch you and restore health unto you and heal you in every broken, depleted place. And not just those, but we pray this for every person. Even if you are in this sanctuary now, we pray the virtue of the Holy Spirit would shroud your body. Do a miracle. You are a miracle working God. You are a prayer hearing God. And we trust you, Father. We give you thanks in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, Isaiah chapter 56, and we're going to look at the first through the eighth verses. Isaiah chapter 56, and we'll look at verses 1 through 8. There the Bible says, keep justice and do righteousness, for my salvation is about to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this, and the son of man who lays hold on it, who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Do not let the son of the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, the Lord has utterly separated me from his people. Nor let the eunuch say, 
Here I am, a dry tree. For thus says the Lord to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths and choose what pleases me and holds fast my covenant. Even to them I will give in my house and within my walls a place and a name. Everyone say there's a place and a name for me. Better than that of sons and daughters, I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Verse 6. Also the sons of the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and holds fast my covenant. Even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Finally, verse 8. The Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel says, Yet I will gather to him others besides those who are gathered to him. I want to speak to you this morning from this subject, and it is kingdom mindsets. Everyone, would you say that? Kingdom mindsets. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Kingdom mindsets. Kingdom mindsets. It, it is... Uh, pretty um, uh, much my desire to uh, deal with all things kingdom for the next few uh, weeks as we seek to set the table at this beginning of the year. Um, it's going to be uh, me speaking and even all of the pastoral team uh, uh, in this subject of establishing a kingdom culture. Establishing a kingdom culture. And one of the things that uh, that includes is the mindset. Culture is something that we uh, uh, support, we sustain, we perpetuate through our mindsets or our attitudes, our our um, ideals, our ideologies and the sort. And, and it's no wonder then that um, in Philippians chapter number two, in Philippians two, Paul deals with the mind. Uh, he says, and let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And we've got to be careful because certain mindsets can uh, be uh, 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 established in us that completely go against the kingdom of God. We, we bring certain mindsets into, our, uh, uh, into the, the, the uh, body of Christ upon arrival. And, and, and so Paul goes on a little bit further Dr. Barksdale, and he says in Romans 12, uh, to be not conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So he's I I identifying, he's acknowledging the fact that, that there needs to be a shift, there needs to be a unlearning. This is a powerful thing. I know many educators who are listening to me right now understands that there are, uh, is, a, is a, a relationship not only with teaching an individual, but sometimes helping them to release old teaching, which might be wrong teaching, broken insight, inadequate, just partial understanding, in order to bring them to a place where they are fully established in the right principle, the right tool, the right methods in order to move forward to 
matriculate, to advance, to promote, to ultimately graduate. Yeah, that's, that's what God is seeking to do in each of us for the sake of the kingdom of God being established. Jesus announced that. We find that in Mark 1 and 15. He announced that today the kingdom of God has come upon you. See, the kingdom of God has been something that was promised for many, many generations through prophecy. We, we, we hear the kingdom of God being prophesied. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Messiah is coming and he's going to reestablish that which God established in the beginning. And that was broken because of what Pastor Sean preached about this morning about the king of Tyre in, e in Ezekiel 28 and how he talked about how God's purpose was broken in the anointed cherub and, and the anointed cherub was, was established but, but he allowed because there was a little bit of pride. There was a little bit of pride that came in and, and then Pastor Lisa comes back and I was waiting for Pastor Sean to say it but Pastor Lisa talked about how in the, old, in the gospels we hear it's taught about a little leaven defiling the whole lump. And so from from a little bit of pride, what God had established and is ordained for the culture of heaven. For the culture of heaven. The, the anointed cherub was in the heavens. And a little bit of pride interrupted the culture of heaven. And in the same way, a little bit of Sin, a little bit of the wrong thing can come in and interfere with the culture that God wanted to be established in the earth. And so our main text, our main text is talking about God establishing his kingdom culture in the earth. And he says, and, he, and the interesting thing is, he was speaking to his people Israel. But he was speaking about other people other than Israel. He was trying to prepare Israel to understand the culture better than they did. Hear me. Israel knew that God chose them, a small nation. But he loved them. And if he gave them his law, he gave them his word. And in the selection of Israel, the opportunity was presented that they could become prideful and arrogant. To believe that what he had delivered unto them was exclusive to them. And therefore, because they believe that it is exclusive to them, that they would not allow anybody else to come in. See, that's what Isaiah 56 is about. Teaching a people who are chosen and selected on how to order the right culture of inclusion And not to be exclusive. I, I want to share with you because, because we, we, talk about, we talk about this whole idea of inclusion in this age in such, in such an a, a amazing frequency. But yet and still, I need us to appreciate that this is a message that is necessary even for the people of God. And, and God is very specific. He's very intentional and specific about how he's messaging this to the people of God. But, but, you know, one of the ways that we talk about exclusion is prejudice. It's prejudice. And, and in his autobiography, Mahatma Gandhi wrote that during his student days, he read 
the Bible. He specifically read the Gospels. How many, y'all know who Mahatma Gandhi is, right? Mahatma Gandhi is the one who went on the hunger fast. I thought it was, you know, interesting that we'll talk about Mahatma Gandhi as we are about to launch in our fast on tomorrow. Because Gandhi in, is, a, is an important historical figure. And, and look at this. We know he, he grew up a, a Hindu and he began, his curiosity was piqued and, and he began to search out the Bible. He, he got a hold of the Gospels and seriously considered converting to Christianity. He believed that in the teachings of Jesus, he could find the solution to the caste system that was dividing India. The caste system is not what we know in this nation. What we know in this nation is the class system that, that allows fluidity, but a caste system is rigid. You, you are born into a caste system, and based upon where you're born is where you'll die. There is no upward mobility. There is no downward mobility. Where you're born is where you will die. And so Mahatma Gandhi said, I'm going to read this Bible because I feel like there's something in this Jesus that can break this yoke that's in my, land, my homeland of India. And he began to read because he said this was dividing all of the people of India. So one Sunday, one Sunday, my mouth on one Sunday, he decided to attend a church service at a nearby church and to talk to the minister about becoming a Christian. And when he entered the sanctuary, however, the usher, but Daisy, the ushers refused to give him a seat and suggested that he go worship with his own people. Gandhi left the church and never returned. This is why I say even the ushers need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. He never returned. He said, and I quote, if Christians have caste differences, not class, caste differences also, I might as well remain a Hindu. End quote. I might as well remain a Hindu. Why am I going to bother embracing the teachings of Christ when even though I feel like there's something to this Christ that, that really is what our nation needs, I, I believe that, that, that it's a waste of my time to pursue it because what I thought I saw, maybe I really didn't see. That usher's prejudice not only betrayed Jesus, but also turned a person away from trusting him as Savior. You see, sometimes we Christians discriminate. We, we discriminate against racial groups and ethnic groups. We discriminate against genders. Huh? Huh? We discriminate against the poor. What one of my colleagues happened to say from the pulpit, all you poor people need to be quiet. Because it's the wealthy people that's paying the rent. We, we discriminate. Watch this, y'all. Stay with me. Stay with me. We, we're getting ready to go into a fast. I'm trying to prepare you. We discriminate against sinners. Think about it. Think about it. And let the church say, say la. We, we discriminate against even studying end time prophecy 
we, we, we sometimes don't even want to hear because, watch this, because it's too fretful. When we start hearing about end time prophecy and the things that God has, has declared will come, we, we, we shut it down because our soul can't handle it. I, I'm so, oh, if this is just too heavy, I, I don't want you to tell me, well, you know, the Bible tells us that the truth is going to do something for us. It, it's going to make us free. It's going to make us free. So why don't we embrace truth just in the name of being comfortable? The church and the New Testament doctrine are founded not only upon God's past dealings with Israel, but also upon his future dealings and I submit that if you miss this you are missing a huge revelation concerning God's kingdom and his agenda when when you when you get this mindset that it's about us for and no more you you are missing a huge part of God's kingdom agenda Pastor Sean, you wrecked me, man. I got, I got one of the most anointed pastoral teams and ministerial teams because y'all hear from God. Y'all hear from God. Y'all get up here and you preach stuff that, that, that the Holy Ghost told you to tell. And you know how I know it's because while he's talking to you, he's talking to me, and, and somehow or another there is a spiritual symmetry without us even talking. We get together and we hear a sound, and there's an echo, and there's a confirmation, and there's check, 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 check. Yep. The Spirit of God, he's talking, he's talking, he's trying to tell you, he's trying to get you to understand. Let he that hath an ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, and God be my witness. We didn't talk. But Holy Spirit's talking. Holy Spirit is talking. We need to understand that he said, and this is my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Upon this rock, I'm building my church. The, the analogy, the, the illustration that you used about, about the preacher who was going to divest from his preaching assignment at one church and go and go into the suburbs and, 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 and erect a new church and, and he was going to build this church around him. Listen, that's so real. That is so real. I want you to know that that was not an anecdotal uh, 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 makeup of the, of the man of God. That's real. It's happening right here in our city. It's happening across the nation. It's happening across the globe. People are creating their kingdoms and have no interest and focus on doing what their assignment is and that is establishing his kingdom come on everybody say establish me Lord in your kingdom I need you to understand as we're doing this fast that that's what we are really praying and saying we want to be established in God's kingdom not establish me in my kingdom don't establish me in my king. My kingdom ain't worth two cents. If you look at it on the Dow Jones, I, we, we got negative value. Your kingdom ain't selling like Apple. And as hard as, as, as Apple is, 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 is doing its thing, Apple's kingdom ain't going to last. <laughs> it's not going to last. It's, it's going to be here today. And something's coming along that's going to make Apple go sit down and have a banana. <laughs> I promise you. Because the only thing that's going to last is God's word. Heaven and earth will pass away, 
but his word shall remain forever. <laughs> so so we, we here today are but a preview of God's kingdom on the earth, and, and we must understand the imperative of embracing God's kingdom mindsets. How is your mind today? Where is your mind today? Are you submitted to the mind of Christ or are you seeking to promote a different agenda? Jeremiah said it. While he was being formed in his mother's womb, he said it under divine inspiration. The Lord declares, I knew you, man. I knew you and I... I, I I shaped you, I formed you, and I ordained you. You, you, didn't, you didn't decide, you know, what you wanted to be on your own. Paul tells us, he says, it's the Lord who causes us both to will and to do his good pleasure. God is at work in us. He's, he's working. Now, he gives us free will, but he's at work in us, and he's trying to move us along the pathway of life. And, and listen, when, when we start with, this is a common phraseology, and don't feel condemned. Just, just learn and, and adjust. He, he, well, a lot of us like to say, something told me. It's not something. It's someone. It's someone who's moving upon your heart and, and moving you into the pathway that, that you are. And can I tell you, listen to me, listen to me. God needs, he desires to have a yielded, kingdom-minded vessel in every sector of life. Oh, my God. He, I need to say this again because the tendency of this age is to believe that the only place that a kingdom-minded person is only to be found is in these four walls. But the devil is a lie. God needs a, a kingdom-minded painter. He needs a kingdom-minded planter. I'm talking about somebody whose hands is in some dirt and who's raising some fruit. He needs a kingdom-minded scientist. He needs a kingdom-minded teacher. He needs a kingdom-minded mechanic who's not going to rob his people blind. I need some kingdom-minded people in every sector of the earth. Come on, somebody who feels me this morning, say, establish me, Lord. Wherever you have ordained for me to be, I need you to be there. We need kingdom teachers who are going to love our babies, who were birthed in poverty, who were birthed at disadvantage. We need kingdom teachers. We need somebody in every sector. What would happen if we had a, a battalion of kingdom police? Who's got so much kingdom in their heart and mind that when the corrupted apples appear, that they'll pull them out and point them out and say, not on my watch. You're going to hold your peace and let God be God. What would happen? What would happen? What would happen? And so, here we are. We, we, we hear in Isaiah 56 that God is prophesying through Isaiah and telling him of the kingdom that he is establishing. Jesus has not even come. Jesus has not shown up on the scene yet. Jesus had not shown up like he was in Mark 1 and 15 where he identified and, and declared the kingdom of God has come upon you. Isaiah is generations, generations before and declaring what God has desired.
Look at verse number one. Media, can you put verse one and two up for me? Verse one and two. In verse number one of Isaiah chapter 56, he says, Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness. For my salvation is what? It's about to come. Keep justice and do righteous. I need to, any, any, any heart that has been heavy and despondent. God says, my righteousness, my, 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 my salvation, it's about to come. It's about to come. Well, those of you who know me, who know who I am, I want you to just keep doing justice. Keep doing righteousness. I need you to do the right thing. Spike Lee didn't say it first. Isaiah said it first. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Do the right thing because it's coming. It's coming. What's coming? My salvation is coming. Put it back up, media. Put it back up. Put it back up. Put it back up. My righteousness, it's coming. And my righteousness will be revealed. Guess what? Many of us are looking up, waiting for the righteousness to land like a spaceship. God is saying, you're going to reveal my righteousness. My righteousness is going to be revealed through you. You're going to be my living epistle. You're going to be the one to cause the light of truth and the light of love to shine in dark places, in depressed circumstances, in situations where it looks like there can be no change and that there is no hope. He's speaking to his people. He's speaking to his people. He's saying, I need you to hear me. I need you to hear me. I need you to hear me. Listen. Listen, the spirit and the bride, Revelation 22, the spirit and the bride come. They say come and, and let one who hears say come and let the one who is thirsty come and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. Then Isaiah 55 says come all of you who are thirsty, come to the waters. You who have no money, come buy and eat come buy wine milk without money and without cost from Isaiah to Revelation God is saying come come and he's saying that you if you have my kingdom mindset should be saying come to who to people who can't buy I need you to say come to people who would choose to buy something else I need you to be my light, reveal my, my will, reveal my righteousness. And in your shining, you, it is as though you are literally telling people who would otherwise not hear the gospel, tell them to come, 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 come. There's a place for you. Come, come. There's space for you. Come, come. There's a will for you. Come. I know you were born in a Hindu family, but God still loves you. God wants you. I know you were born on the other side of the globe, but somehow or another the kingdom of God has come. It has reached you. Listen, if there's one thing that Corona has shown us is that it don't take a long time for something to move across the globe. Good God Almighty, they have already announced that there's another variant in France. And they said in three weeks, it's going to be here. You can talk to somebody in Zimbabwe, Africa right now on a little device. Your voice. How does your voice move so instantaneously? If there is a delay, it is a two-second delay. So my voice spoken in North Carolina in two seconds can be heard in Zimbabwe which has a six hour time delay it's already night time, it's evening time in Africa God is saying this message is global this message is global every nation every tribe every color. Matthew 28, go ye therefore and teach what? All nations. All nations. We're the only ones who are going around this American westernized uh, 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 righteous mess. We're the only ones talking about who can't come. No, you don't belong here. 
No, no, there's no place for you. You need to go. No, no, I don't want to worship with you because you don't sing music the way I like it. Huh? Y'all know we merge the church and look around. Look around. What is that about? It's flesh. It's going after my kingdom instead of his kingdom. One said, after the merger, some of you have heard me say this before. They said, I never signed up for a black pastor and I never will. And that one was an elder sitting in the highest seat in the church governmental structure. And so if that's where the mentality is, what else is going to be circle, uh, uh, filtering throughout the, the, uh, the pews? You already know. So it didn't just happen to Mahatma Gandhi. It also happened to me. It didn't just happen to Bishop Starks. You can say it also happened to me. Where? What? That the adversary has tried to deflect and to distract and to deny when the Spirit of God is saying, come. Listen, listen, listen. You know what's so interesting? The word for salvation in the Hebrew is Yeshua, and the word for Jesus is Yeshua. He is salvation. And so when people want to be exclusive with salvation, they're being exclusive with Jesus. So Revelation 22 and 12 says, look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give to each person according to what they have done. His, his idea of coming is to everyone. It is, it is to everyone. He's coming. Jesus is coming. The Bible says that he's coming in the clouds. And when is he coming? We don't know. At any time, at any time, Christ can come. We only think of that es eschatologically about his return and the rapture. But listen, what I need you to understand, if you really got a kingdom mindset, listen to me, listen. If you really got a kingdom mindset, you need to know that Christ can come at any time before he comes back to take his church. Oh, God, hear me, I said. His coming is not limited to when he comes to take the church. His coming is supposed to be any day, today, today. When you go to lunch, Jesus is supposed to be able to come through you. He can come while you go to the restroom. I'm told that the ladies like to do a whole lot of dialogue in the restroom. And this is the reason why they have a sitting room attached to most restrooms that the ladies go into. So why are you in the restroom, ladies? Y'all stop looking at me crazy through those masks. This is the reason why when one gets it, let me go to the girl, I'm going to come with you. Girl, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Let me grab my purse. I'm going to come with you. Okay. <laughs> In other words, <laughs> he can come <laughs> when he wants to. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm not. I, I just, I didn't write that down. I really felt that in my shanana. <laughs> So we are called to live in the light. We're called to live in the light. We're called to live in the light. The beautiful light. Because he says, my righteousness is coming. I need you 
to know, I mean, excuse me, my salvation is coming. I need you to do justice and to do righteousness. My salvation is coming. And I work through the partnership of others. I, I use others to reflect the light that others would see it and know that they have the right also to come. Come to the light. Come to the light. What are you reflecting? Come to Jesus. You who are weary, weak, and scorned, come to Jesus. You who are broken and battered, come to Jesus. That's what a kingdom mindset will say. So many are saying, stay away. No, we don't like you. We don't want you. You don't look. If it was based upon a look, you could have been excluded. Because it's so subjective. It's so arbitrary. It's so relative to opinions. But God is saying, I love the, the world. I so loved the world that I gave my son to the world. That whosoever would believe, I pray that you have this mindset. Right where you are, bow your, bow your heads and your heart. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I, I ask you, God, that you would help us. Help us, Lord God, in this way that we would be what you have called us to be. Help us, Father, to produce the type of justice and righteous fruit ah, that individuals will see the reflection of your love and the truth. God, we need you to search our hearts. Search our hearts. Help us, Lord God, to, to not carry the stain of hatred and prejudice and bitterness and malice. Whatever it is that the enemy wanted to inject in us, that little portion, don't let pride stand in our way, God. We, we want to produce a righteousness that reflects the shine of your glory. Help us, Holy Spirit. We understand that we are not our own, for we have been bought with a price. And we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We submit to you. Not our will, but your holy will be done. It's in your precious name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise? I know some of y'all are looking at your watches in disbelief. I open the doors of the church. Come now. If there is anyone here who don't know Jesus if you don't know Jesus as Savior and Lord we open the doors of the church and we invite you to come if there's one who does not know Christ as the Redeemer that he has promised he would be would you receive him today would you receive him today maybe you're here and you want to rededicate your life to Jesus we invite you to come if you're here today and you want to be water baptized if that's what you're in need of, listen, we can do it in such a mighty way.
come, come, come. If you're here and you need a church family to uh, uh, join and be a part of, you, you need covering. Listen, we want to receive you. Is there one all over this room? Would you stand with me? For those of you who are watching us, if you're watching us by live stream, if you would text WBICC Connect to 94,000, there you will find a link for you to help us to reach out to you. We want to minister to you near or far. Near or far, we want to minister to you if that's you. Don't delay. Text WBICC Connect now. Do it now. Do it now. And we promise that we will be faithful in our calling. We understand our purpose as, as kingdom citizens, as, as ministers of the gospel. We will do our part and allow Holy Spirit to do his part. The scripture says it well. He says, one plants, another waters. But it's God that brings forth the increase. We are not trying to claim that what will be produced in your life is our doing. It's the Lord's doing. It's the Lord's doing. We decree it be marvelous, to be marvelous in our eyes. But there's a small part that we have to play, and we are obliged to play it. So text now. If you're here, come now. 